What's up everyone? Welcome to Audio Architects. My name's Mike. Today I'm going to be building an entire hi-fi system just using the cheapest stuff from FX Audio on Amazon. So I'm going to give you an idea of I guess how to build a, a mini hi-fi system without breaking the bank but still sounding relatively good. And I'm gonna be pairing this stuff with the 3030Is from Q Acoustics because I chose those because they're, they're relatively inexpensive as far as bookshelves go and their sound quality is absolutely out of this world. So I wanted to give that a good pairing. So obviously you're gonna need cables to connect everything and I know that's another expenditure that you'd be incurring uh, building this little hi-fi system, but I'm, I broke it down to like the least expensive but decent quality stuff. So I chose for the RCAs to connect the preamp to the amp. Um, the RCAs are gonna be from Seismic Audio on Amazon. I really like these because they're very inexpensive, they work really well, and they look pretty cool. So three good things towards that. And to connect the amplifier to the uh, speakers I'm gonna be using, Q Acoustics, I'm gonna be using the Silverback speaker cables um, with banana connectors from Sewell. So Sewell has a ton ton of cool stuff and it's so inexpensive so check them out I'll also link that in the description below um, you'll find links to all this stuff so that way if you want to check it out or, or build your own system that's cool too okay now that we got the cables out of the way let's go ahead and open this stuff up I've been dying to open this stuff up so I know you saw me do that review on the FX audio uh, preamp a while back but what I did was I went and got a different one that is by the same company and around the same price. It was like 39, maybe 40 bucks. So let's go ahead and open that up and see what it's all about. Okay, in the package, you got your RCA cables to connect, but we're not gonna be using these uh, cheapo cables. We're gonna be using the Seismic Audio ones. All right, we got a power adapter. Always gonna need a power adapter. The tubes on these ones are a little longer, which I think is pretty cool. It's a different, obviously different kind of tube. And okay, so the unit is the same size as the other one I have and has the same tone controls, the bass, the treble, the volume control, uh, and in the back just has an in and out, in and out. Uh, so really simple. Uh, it seems like it's really well put together. I guess we can, I guess we can uh, go ahead and shove these suckers in there. Now seating the, seating the tubes is a pain in the ass because if you don't seat them right, you're gonna get all sorts of weird noise, but I've done this enough times now where it's uh, pretty simple. Okay, so that is the FX Audio tube amplifier. Um, and I'm kind of digging it. I like these longer tubes, these are pretty cool. The other ones came with uh, the smaller tubes, but this is still pretty rad. I'm interested to see if there's any kind of audible difference between the two. So I'm, I'm actually gonna do A-B tests on this one and the other one I have on my main system, but for now, that is not the priority. Right now we're trying to build the least expensive hi-fi system possible. And I know I'm pushing it using this kind of stuff, but um, honestly, FX Audio hasn't been bad in the past. Like that preamp I have on my other stuff, super good. It works super fine. I don't know what people are freaking out about, but um, more RCA cables. Uh, okay, so this power amplifier, and I'll give you all the specs in the uh, clip ahead of, you know, the wattage and all that good stuff, as I always do. But uh, this is just my ceremonious unboxing that you're experiencing right now. Uh, pretty big brick, you know, pretty nice uh, power cable. I like this. And here's the amplifier. Man, this thing's kind of deep. Okay. So here is the amplifier. Oh, wow, this is kind of cool. Okay, so it has... Obviously a volume control. Volume control, power button, and in the back, it's got your speaker outs, little banana plug, little banana plug interconnects, 
and it has an audio in. Super simple, nothing to it. Like I said, compared to the in depth, it is considerably deeper than that. Obviously it has more to it, but um, I think that actually kind of pairs kind of cool because it's kind of flush with with the other one. I'm excited to see what this sounds like because uh, I mean, together this was about, I don't know, 80, 90 bucks with, I mean, with cables and everything, maybe a hundred bucks plus maybe 399 for the speakers. So you're literally getting a hi-fi system for under $500, which is cool. And, and of course, obviously you can use cheaper speakers. You don't have to use $400 speakers. You can use, uh, you know, those Dayton audio that the Audiophiliac is raving about, um, which those I'm sure are, are pretty rad. So, so yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna be uh, hooking it all up and listening to it. And I'll give you the, like I said, I'll give you the specs on everything and we'll go from there. I think this is pretty rad though. I'm, I'm excited to, to see how this, how this turns out because I mean, for a hundred bucks, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Stay tuned. A couple months ago, I took a look at the FX Audio Tube 03 preamplifier that came with the GE5654 valve tubes. I really liked it. So when I saw the same unit with 6K4 vacuum tubes for only 38 bucks on Amazon, I felt it was necessary to give it a try. The unit comes with bass and treble tone controls, a volume knob, and a power switch in its front panel. In the back, you have an RCA input and output to connect most devices straight from a DAC, which FX Audio also offers. However, in this setup, I am using the PiFi as a source, which already has a built-in Burr Brown DAC. The Tube 03's enclosure is a black brushed aluminum, and inside it has a black immersion gold printed circuit board and a gold plated interface. That's good quality for the price point. I wasn't expecting that. To accompany the preamp, I chose FX Audio's TPA3250, which is a two-channel Class D amplifier providing 80 watts per two channels at four ohms. Its insides are impressive using better quality components than a lot of its competitors at around the same price point of only 68 bucks and overall when taken to higher volumes the amps aluminum shell stayed cool to the touch the rear has gold plated binding posts to plug your banana connectors and an rca input it claims to have a total harmonic distortion of less than 0.01 percent however when i pushed it to higher volumes it started to really struggle to maintain any type of harmonic balance it just didn't have the stones to push the q acoustic bookshelf speakers very far at medium to low volume it sounded absolutely great though. I would pair this amp with speakers with much higher efficiency like the Klipsch or Martin Logan bookshelf offerings. I connected them using the Seismic RCA cables and the Suell Silverback speaker cables. All right, so after getting it all hooked up, I went ahead and used my PiFi as a source. If you don't know what a PiFi is, check the link right here because it'll take you directly to the video explaining what the PiFi is and how I built it and kind of where it's going. So with the PiFi and everything hooked up, I went ahead and uh, fired it up. So after firing it up, I noticed that there was a little bit of uh, noise in the right speaker. It was just this like, it was this weird, like staticky, ugly, like tube noise that you would get when, you know, you're messing around with tube amps. So I was really disappointed because it was actually distracting. I tried reseeding the 6K4 tubes and that's what it came with. It came with two uh, 6K4 tubes, um, however, one is taller than the other. I don't know if that's gonna be a thing or if they just, yeah, these are both 6K4s. Maybe all tubes aren't <laughs> made equally, but um, either way, I used these tubes for a second, you know, obviously saw that noise. So I went ahead and tried these. These are the 6J1P EV Soviet tubes that I purchased from Amazon and they are pretty cool because they look older and they came from the Soviet Union. So it's it's kind of a weird uh, you know, dynamic there, but either way, I seated them and they're obviously both seven pins. So, it, it, so I guess it could be an upgrade from these, I guess it could be an upgrade from these 6K4s. Uh, so after seating them and firing it up, 
I automatically noticed a audible difference in the sound quality, in the volume. Like it just sounded louder, brighter, uh, better in every way, shape and form. So I did try those Soviet tubes with the other FX Audio uh, preamp I have that has the 5654 tubes in it. And I actually like the 5654 tubes better in that environment. However, in this environment, yeah, I would definitely spend, I think I paid 15, 20 bucks for the for the Soviet tubes. Uh, I would definitely spend the 15, 20 bucks to upgrade those tubes because uh, I just wasn't impressed with the 6K4s. Uh, maybe they're bad tubes, maybe they're just not, maybe they're just not my style, you know? And I'm starting to now understand what all these, you know, tube heads are talking about, about it, you know, having a direct effect on sound quality. And it is, it's true, it's true, it's debunked, you know, it, the whole thing's debunked. So tubes matter, definitely. Other than that, the whole system sounded pretty good. I liked it. It obviously wasn't as, you know, powerful and, and clean as my official system back here that is obviously worth thousands of dollars. But for under, what, under a hundred bucks that I spent on the tube amp and the amplifier, or maybe a little over a hundred bucks with the cables and all that, I think I think it's legit. I, I think if you're if you're starting out and you know this is a great entry point. FX audio is an amazing entry point to get to get started, to learn about you know hi-fi, to learn about tubes and to learn about how things work. So I would definitely recommend it for someone who's starting out and is on a very stringent budget. However, if you have a little bit more of a budget, I would obviously recommend something a little bit more higher end. However, I think that the FX Audio did its job and it did it well. Uh, I'm not disappointed. I thought the power coming out of the amplifier was more than enough to power the Q acoustics. However, when I took it to higher volumes, it did start, you know, distorting a little bit and it didn't, it, it didn't, it almost felt like it didn't have enough juice to give it to those speakers. However, with a smaller pair of more efficient speakers, I think you'd be more than fine. So I know I gave you guys kind of some pros and cons there. Uh, I don't want it to sound like, it, you know, this is a, a crap system because it's not, it's actually a really cool little setup. And I actually use one of the FX audio preamps in my actual system system. So uh, I stand by the product I think it's a good product however um, if you are looking for more of a high-end sound or you're looking for a power amplifier that will give it a lot more juice and sound a lot better I definitely recommend going down uh, a different Avenue than than that but overall cool thanks guys for watching I appreciate it if you like the content definitely smash the like subscribe to the channel because with smaller channels like mine it means a lot it's like very important to get that extra subscription. So if you want to support my channel, a subscription would mean the world. And of course, ring the bell so that way you get notified every time I put out new content. Thank you so much. Have a great day.